Complete. Stage two is in the books. Load it up. And now you can see the venting off of that uh, liquid oxygen. Talking about Hoberg, this flight will be his first flight since NASA selected him to be an astronaut along with Rajachari's class in 2017, the Turtles. In the role of mission specialist is astronaut Sultan Al Niyadi. He was chosen by the Mohammed bin Rashid Space Center of the United Arab Emirates to be a part of Expeditions 6869. The father of five spent most of his life in Al Ain and Abu Dhabi, but in 2020 traded that in for astronaut training in Houston at NASA's Johnson Space Center. This will be his first trip to space. To space. And it's also the first trip for second mission specialist, Roscosmos cosmonaut Andrei Fedyev. He will be working to monitor the spacecraft during the dynamic launch and re-entry phases of flight. He will be a flight engineer for Expedition 68, just turned 42 years of age. Each of these four crew members will be part of Expedition 68 once they arrive at the International Space Station. T minus 18 minutes and counting. We had strong back chill that began. And coming up in just a few minutes, we'll start loading liquid oxygen onto the second stage. And I think a, a great testament to the international partnerships of this program. Half the crew is you know, international. Sultan being the first uh, UAE astronaut to launch on a U.S. vehicle from the U.S. to have trained at Johnson Space Center. Um, an amazing, uh, you know, completion of the partnership that started several years ago and taking that now all the way to completion. Um, and just great to see, you know, NASA and space exploration being just this great unifier uh, for the world, uh, especially as, you know, there's low Earth orbit, but then we look beyond that to Artemis and, and Mars and just the the collaboration and the work to do such hard things and really pulling together the best of, of all our all the nations. And the partnership of those nations rises above all else. And That's, it's, yeah. uh, it's impressive, the camaraderie of the crews in space with their international backgrounds. So that venting, so we talked about there's two things happening. In the Dragon case. SpaceX, F9 is proceeding with prop load and we're tracking no issues with Dragon or F9 going into launch. SpaceX Dragon copies. So update from the core that's on track. So we talked about the condensation a few times, and there's also the venting, so two different processes. The condensation is the super chilled fuel cooling the, the metal and the skin around it. The venting is because it's super cold as it heats up on the inside, just from the air temperature, you know, essentially working its way in there, it vents. And so that's just like a pot boiling, um, and just like you would, you know, lift the lid off a tea kettle to let the pressure out. Uh, this is the same thing you're seeing happen there. So that's what's happening kind of from the middle of the screen. Yeah, and, and on a calm night like tonight, the winds have totally died down. You can see it as it cascades down like a waterfall coming off uh, the middle of uh, the strong back there. Want to make a quick note about the, the radio and how you can hear, if you're on uh, local amateur radio on the VHF radio frequency, turn into 146.940 megahertz and UHF radio frequency 444.925 megahertz on the FM mode. You can hear this all around the space coast. Load has started. And there goes our stage two locks load. On a beautiful night on the coast of central Florida. For stage one, that's going to continue to load and we'll see that go all the way down to T minus six minutes in terms of uh, the RP1 load, in terms of locks, that will continue until about T minus three to two minutes on the liquid oxygen side. A lot more volume, of course, in the first stage. Hey, let's throw up a quick social media question. What do you say, Raj? Sounds good. What do we got here? At JSE Garen asks, oh, I am nine years old and want to know if you can see airplanes on the ISS. I have never heard that question. So actually, uh, Megan uh, MacArthur had a cool post where she took a picture of the ground and you can see the contrails of a plane. So you can't see a plane if it's not what we call conning, meaning contrails. You can, if you can find the contrails, then you can follow it back to find the plane, but it's super hard to find an actual 
airplane that's not in the contrails. Um, we also spent some time on Crew 3 trying to see who could one-up each other to find ships. Uh, so you can cheat and look around the Panama Canal uh, to see if you could find ships there, but you, <laughs> you need binoculars to help yourself. But if you know where to look uh, or along the shipping lanes, you can usually find some from ships. And then airplanes, if you look around, uh, like the places like over the Atlantic where you can look for contrails and find planes, but absolutely you can see them. What a great answer. Didn't know that. Thank you, Raj. Let's head out to Kate Tice now. Thanks, Daryl. Everything's still looking good for launch of Falcon 9 and Dragon Endeavor just under 15 minutes from now. Now, for those just tuning in, Falcon 9 began propellant load at T minus 35 minutes. Around T minus 20 minutes, Falcon 9 completed loading of RP-1 fuel on the second stage. Fuel loading on the first stage remains underway. Um, and it is approximately 80% uh, full. Um, it will finish around T minus six minutes. Falcon 9 is also underway with loading of densified liquid oxygen, uh, and that will wrap up at T minus three minutes uh, for the first stage and T minus two minutes for the second stage. Coming up, we'll perform checkouts of the thrust vector controllers, a procedure called TVC wiggles. We'll command Falcon 9 to activate those thrust vector controllers and actually wiggle the engines a couple degrees. This verifies that those engines will be able to move while in flight, which is how Falcon 9 steers itself during the ascent phase. Dragon mission director and team reporting no issues. Communication checkouts are complete, the crew access arm is retracted, and the launch escape system is armed. And as you can see there uh, on the right-hand side of your screen, the crew is strapped in and ready to go to space. Everybody looks pretty calm and chill, uh, you know, given that they are going to space in uh, 13 minutes. <laughs> Final instructions to the crew will come at T minus 10 minutes. The crew displays will be configured for launch, which give the crew insight into how the launch is proceeding and provides constant updates on vehicle health. At T minus five minutes, we'll then be in terminal count and Dragon will transition to internal power. We'll hear continued status call outs from SpaceX mission control as we get closer to liftoff. The range is go, all secured air and sea space remain clear. And as you can see, weather remains gorgeous uh, and everything still remains inbound for the launch criteria. So all in all, Falcon 9 and Dragon Endeavor, all systems remain go for launch in just 12 minutes and 34 seconds from now. All right, thank you very much, Kate. And take a look at this picture. Before their flight, Crew-6 got a picture with what was supposed to be their booster. Actually got swapped out for a brand new booster, but anytime you get that close to the hardware, it's a cool thing. Brand new booster launching tonight. And at the time Falcon 9 and Dragon launches, the International Space Station, which is being tracked right here by Mission Control, will be 260 statute miles over the Bristol Channel, southwest of Cardiff, Wales. Crew 6, once they get off the ground, will spend the next 25 hours chasing down the International Space Station for a rendezvous at 1.11 a.m. Eastern Time tomorrow. It'll be Friday. And we'll have live coverage on NASA TV of docking and the Crew 6 welcome ceremony at 11 p.m. Eastern Time tonight final right. thoughts raja yep so get ready to lift off yeah so right here there uh at 10 minutes they'll probably say some thank yous to the ground uh, a lot of people got them here uh they're, you're gonna see them messing with the displays so woody and steve will be putting up what's called forward views on the outside displays so the mission specialists can monitor the parameters that's how they monitor anything that would uh, how the performance is doing in the center display they'll bring up the event details uh that show the launch and you'll see them put their hands down once they get closer to launch and they'll have this display up so they can basically watch they'll have everything configured and that's what they talk about configuring for launch so that you don't have to touch it during the launch itself. Colonel Chari putting us in the seat of the astronauts with exactly what they're doing. Thank you so much. Appreciate it. And one more thing I want to say. I don't know, Raja. I have a feeling there's love in the air. Not going to give it away, but it just feels like there's love in the air. you got to stay tuned to find out more about that. For now, we'll turn it over to Gary and Kate at SpaceX headquarters in Hawthorne, California. Take us through the rest of the countdown. Thanks, Daryl. That's right. We're exactly T minus 10 and a half minutes until liftoff of Crew 6. 
Uh, as you can see there on your screen, Falcon 9 is underway with propellant loading, as indicated uh, by those white clouds forming around the vehicle. Uh, the fuel loading is complete on the second stage. LOX load remains underway. It's about 40% full on the second stage. LOX load also underway. Dragon, SpaceX confirmed crew displays configured for launch. SpaceX Dragon crew displays are configured for launch. Copy that, Steve. And once again, on behalf of the entire SpaceX team, we're honored to have you aboard Dragon Capsule Endeavor on its next trip to the International Space Station. We wish you a great mission, good luck, Godspeed, and enjoy the ride. And thanks again to everyone out there who made the vehicle, the ISS, our mission, and our crew ready for launch. Really want to thank everyone and appreciate the uh, great call, much appreciated call for the scrub the other night. Uh, it was a great uh, call and a good learning opportunity for the crew and I think for the teams. And uh, so once more to the breach, dear friends, Crew 6 is ready to launch. Some nice words there between the crew, as you see there on your screen, and SpaceX Core, uh, located here at SpaceX Mission Control, which a live view uh, there on your screen, as you can tell by perhaps the, the ambient noise around me, the energy is starting to grow uh, in anticipation for launch coming up about eight and a half minutes from now. That's right, the energy is high here, Kate. Now at that T minus 10 minute mark, we heard the good luck and Godspeed from the teams here in Mission Control in Hawthorne, where that crowd is gathering. Meanwhile, we're tracking the loading of fuel and oxidizer on the first and second stage. Second stage filled with fuel right now, continuing to fill with oxidizer. It'll be the last of the tanks to fill. Stage one continuing to be underway. At the 10-minute mark, you heard that call for configuring the uh, crew displays for launch. That was confirmed. At the T-minus 10-minute mark, it also is a point where Falcon 9 launch commit criteria gets checked by the computers past that milestone. Now we're counting down to the next milestone at T-minus 7 minutes, which is setting up for engine chill. That's right. We should hear that call out in about 44 seconds. Um, at T-minus 7 minutes, we will actually open up um, the pre-valves to the M1D engines, those nine engines at the base of the first stage. Um, that will allow a little bit of that super chilled, densified liquid oxygen to flow into the hardware, the, those turbo pumps. And that basically helps prepare the hardware from a thermal standpoint or a temperature standpoint uh, for that full flow of super chilled liquid oxygen. So um, we basically open up the pre-valves and a little bit of that locks flows in and helps cool the hardware down in preparation for full flow of liquid oxygen. Engine chill has started. And as expected, there's that call out for that engine chill, indicating the pre-valves are open and the engines are beginning to prepare for liftoff. Now under six minutes, 45 seconds from launch, again, we're continuing to fuel the Falcon 9 rocket, stage two, filled with the RP-1 kerosene. At the T-minus six minute mark, we should hear a call out that the stage one RP load is complete. They're just topping that off. Liquid oxygen on both the first and second stages stage one, come next. RP-1 load complete. And there's that confirmation. We're counting down to T-minus five minutes at this point. At T-minus five, the, dr the dragon continue is configured for terminal count. And at terminal count, Dragon is switched to internal power, right now receiving power from umbilical lines from the ground. Also at uh, just under five minutes, we'll be waiting for strong back retract. The arm that's currently propping the Falcon 9 and Dragon up, we'll see the clamp arm start to open and the strong back itself will tilt about two degrees off from where it is now at a 90 degree position. Just a little off, and then it'll get out of the way completely upon liftoff. 
Then, of course, comes the, uh, after the strong back retracts, comes the completion of liquid oxygen uh, loading on both the first and second stage. For now, T minus five minutes, 15 seconds. We're going to stand by for that call of configuring for terminal count. Crew six in their seated positions and ready for launch. Dragon is in configure for terminal count. Thanks for pressurizing for Strong Bay Retrack. All right, and we heard both of those calls. Dragon onboard computers are going to take control of the vehicle. We should be seeing the clamp arm at the very top of the second stage, right underneath where you see the unpressurized trunk of Dragon, which is indicated by the half black and half white indicators, the black being the solar panels that provide power to the Dragon is on its transit to the International Space Station. Now that confirmation of strong back retract, we should be able to visually see that strong back. The strong back will retract about two degrees away from the vehicle. Then at liftoff, the strong back will actually go back to 45 degrees. That strong back is part of the transporter erector, which provides uh, the liquids and gases and uh, electrical connections to the vehicle. As Gary pointed out, those clamp arms opened up underneath the trunk, just above the first stage. And you can see that action happening now as that initial retraction just a couple degrees away from the vehicle. At this point in time, fueling remains underway, excuse me, propellant load remains underway. All fuels are loaded, that RP-1 um, liquid oxygen load Stage should... one, lock flow complete. There, we just heard that call out that that is all done. Second stage, lock load still underway. That will wrap up at about T minus two minutes. Now that that first stage liquid oxygen uh, load is complete, we'll see um, some more of that white gaseous cloud forming around the vehicle uh, due to those lines being Dragon closed off. Dragon is in terminal count and on internal power. All right, good call out there indicating that Dragon is running on its own power. We are in the terminal count now at T minus two minutes and 29 seconds. The crew remains comfortable there on the right hand side of your screen. About 15 seconds remaining in stage two locks load. Stage two, lock flow complete. Okay. Dragon is in auto idle. You heard those calls. The Falcon 9 fully fueled with RP-1 rocket fuel as well as the liquid oxygen. That call of Dragon is in auto idle. There's going to be a se series gas of calls. Has started. Expect lightning. There's the gas closeout purging the lines of the fuel that has supplied the Falcon 9 with RP-1 and liquid oxygen. We'll also wait for a call of the arming of the flight termination system. The Dragon flight computers are configured for launch. Flight termination system will allow Falcon 9 to talk to Dragon on the ride uphill. Terminate the flight, Falcon issuing an abort. Dragon is in countdown. T minus one minute and counting. Dragon is in countdown. Everything's looking good for launch. Dragon, SpaceX, go for launch. SpaceX, Dragon, copy, go for launch. T minus 30 seconds. T minus 30 seconds and counting. All teams pulled, go.
15 seconds. Ready for an on-time launch for the instantaneous minus 10, run. 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. Engines full power and lift off of crew six. Go Dragon, go Falcon. Now launching on Endeavour's fourth flight to the International Space Station. Vehicles pitching down range, 1.7 million pounds of thrust provided by the nine Merlin 1D engines on the first stage. Hearing good call, stage one propulsion is nominal. than the speed of sound. Max Q. Stage one, throttle up. All right, now that we're past Max Q. One Bravo. Copy, one Bravo. That one Bravo indicator are different abort modes that are called that allow the ground teams and the crew to track about the position of the Falcon 9 and the Dragon as they make their way up the eastern seaboard. In the event of an abort, these different abort modes would indicate about the position where Dragon would land, started. as well as uh, indicate what series of maneuvers Dragon would indicate. But so far, we're hearing good calls on the performance of the Falcon 9 on its ride uphill. One minute, 53 seconds into flight. We're about 30 seconds away from main engine cutoff which will be followed quickly by stage separation and second engine start, which is the ignition of that MVAC engine on the second stage. Now about 10 seconds away from main engine cutoff. Two Alpha. Copy, Stage two Alpha. separation confirmed. There you can see on your screen confirmation of stage separation as well as ignition of that second stage engine. Second stage is now carrying the Crew-6 astronauts to orbit. Beautiful view there on the left-hand side of your screen coming from the first stage which as you can see is still gaining an altitude. It has not yet uh, reached its apogee, a beautiful view of the Florida Space Coast there in the background. Meanwhile, we're tracking good performance on that MVAC engine. On the screen to your right, we'll be hearing periodic performance calls about once every minute of the status of the trajectory of the second stage and the Crew-6 astronauts that are inside Crew Dragon Endeavor. We'll also be hearing call-outs, just like you heard just there, as we pass over the various ground stations along the ascent track. Dragon, SpaceX, nominal trajectory. And there's that performance call-out. Dragon acknowledges nominal trajectory. As Hearing. for the first stage there on the left-hand side of your screen, that first stage still gaining an altitude, although um, that gain is slowing down. Um, it will be making its way back down to Earth, landing, uh, attempting a landing on our drone ship. Just read the instructions, which is located um, off the Florida coast by a couple hundred miles. The MVAC engine on stage two burns for six minutes after second stage ignition. We'll continue to see 
this engine burn until about eight and a half minutes into today's flight. Dragon, SpaceX, nominal trajectory. SpaceX, Dragon, nominal trajectory. Again, these performance calls happen once a minute. Flight team's continuing to track the Falcon 9 and its ascent. Everything's looking good so far. You'll also continue to hear those check-ins of the ground stations as we pass them. At this point in time, we're roughly two minutes away from the next major event, which will be the entry burn for the first stage. We will relight three engines, uh, three M1D engines on that first stage to help slow the vehicle down uh, as it re-enters the Earth's atmosphere. We're approaching 200 kilometers in altitude. It's about 124 miles. Meanwhile, velocity. Dragon, SpaceX, nominal trajectory. Good trajectory calls. About to pass 12,000 kilometers SpaceX per hour. Dragon, nominal trajectory. It's about 7,500 miles per hour. Everything looking nominal for both first and second stages. Now coming up to T plus six and a half minutes into flight. Mostly what we're hearing now are the performance calls in the second stage. In about a minute is when we'll see uh, a series of events in rapid succession. It's been a pretty good pace since second stage ignition. Uh, about a, uh, less than a minute from now, we'll start to see Dragon, more action SpaceX, on the first stage. Nominal trajectory. SpaceX Dragon, nominal trajectory. As Gary mentioned, those callouts occurring about once every minute. Now we're about 20 seconds away from the first stage entry burn. That burn will last about 30 seconds and help slow the vehicle down as it re-enters back into the Earth's atmosphere. Stage one entry burn startup. And there you can see stage two, FTS has saved. on your screen that first stage entry burn has begun. That booster sees high drag, which actually scrubs roughly 70% of the velocity by the time that the landing burn begins. So about another 10 seconds of this entry burn. Again, three engines relit, the center and two Stage radio one, engines. And conclusion of that entry burn. Meanwhile, good performance on the second stage. Since second stage ignition, we've been in a two alpha abort mode. The next abort modes will happen in rapid succession to Bravo, to Charlie, Delta, Terminal and Echo. Guidance each indicating different series of maneuvers in the event of an abort scenario. But as you've been hearing through the periodic checks, we're seeing good trajectory, good performance on the Dragon and Falcon 9. Seco, second stage engine cutoff, would be coming at 8 minutes 48 seconds. We're coming up on that event. Princess Dragon Shannon. Shannon. Copy, Shannon. Now off the coast of Shannon, Ireland. Standing by for Seco. MVAC shut down. Stage one landing burn. And there we heard the call out indicating that landing burn. Dragon, SpaceX, we have a nominal orbit insertion. Great news there for. SpaceX Dragon copies nominal orbital insertion. Launch escape system disarmed. For Dragon Endeavor. Stage one, landing leg deploy. Attempting to land on our drone ship. Just read the instructions. Stage one, landing is possible. And there you can see on your screen, and also indicated by the cheers behind me, successful landing of this booster. 
its first trip to space and therefore its first landing. An eruption of applause here at SpaceX Mission Control. And of course, after second stage engine cutoff, you heard that call that the crew is in orbit. They're now in a coast phase. Where the second stage remains idle uh, for about three minutes before Dragon separates from the second stage. Meanwhile, you can see that first stage in the legs right on target. We're now getting views from the second stage. You can see this is one of the cameras that's pointing up into the trunk of Dragon. Of course, we're continuing to get views of the expansion nozzle at the end of the MVAC engine. But the crew is in orbit. Falcon 9 has almost done its job. It completed its job uh, with propelling the astronauts through the six minutes of the second stage and, of course, the more than two and a half minutes of the first stage. Continuing in this coast period, we're heading to about the 12 minute mark after launch. So we're approaching 11 minutes right now. But it's great to see the crew in orbit. Uh, of course, we are waiting for that step separation. You can see this view right here of the MVAC engine, the second stage really in just an idle position, really just coasting, not many commands being issued from the Falcon 9. But of course, at the very end, we'll actually issue the command for separating the Dragon from the Falcon 9. You'll see a series, you may see a series of burns. The Draco engines uh, on the service section of the Draco will fire and uh, increase uh, separation distance from the second stage. Once again, live view there from the second stage looking up into the trunk, which of course is the unpressurized section um, that goes along with the Dragon capsule to the International Space Station. That's where we are able to store uh, basically cargo that is able to be exposed to the vacuum of space. So a great view there looking up into the trunk. That will be hopefully the first views that we get um, of that separation event, which we're expecting here uh, any second. There you can see on your screen confirmation. Dragon separation confirmed. Of that separation confirmed. Dragon Endeavor is now floating free in space. That's right, the Falcon Dragon 9. Dragon CE here. Welcome to orbit. Congratulations. Your flight is exactly four years after the flight of the Demo 1 mission. Like Andre said, all the best things take two tries. Happy that we could get you off tonight. Uh, if you enjoyed your ride, please don't forget to give us five stars. Over to LD for some words. Also, a friendly reminder to put your sushi orders in for CRS-27. Have a safe ride to the space station, and we look forward to seeing you when you get home. Thank you for flying SpaceX. I could lost the signal, Bermuda. And SpaceX Dragon copies all. That was fantastic. Thank you. The Crew-6 astronauts, of course, uh, having a strong bond. And SpaceX Dragon, we'd like to really for the great ride to orbit today. Uh, it's greatly appreciated. It may have taken two rides, but it's two times, but it's worth the trip. And uh, I guess I'll pass it over to Woody for some words. Yeah, SpaceX Dragon, just want to say as a rookie flyer, that was one heck of a ride. Thank you. I would say put it as an absolute miracle of engineering, and I just feel so lucky that I get to fly on this amazing machine. Thanks to SpaceX, thanks to NASA, commercial crew program, and our international partners. Um, a lot of innovation went into this, tireless work effort, and a lot of painstaking attention to detail and focus on testing. And I think that's what makes it all possible to fly humans in space. Thank you. Some really nice words. Uh, 
величайшей международной команды, как международной космической станции, работая вместе на благо всего человечества. Today, humanity takes another step. For next big leap, and for me, a huge honor to be part of such a big and friendly family and the greatest international team of the ISS, working together for all mankind. Thank you. Well said, everybody. Uh, allow me to say a few words in Arabic first. السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته الحمد لله وصلنا الفضاء بس بغيت أشكر أمي وأبوي وأشكر عائلتي شكرا القيادة الرشيدة وشكرا لمركز محمد بن راشد للفضاء اللي يعطوني الثقة هذه وكذلك أشكر كل من جهزنا ودربنا لهذه اللحظة التاريخية من مختلف وكالات الفضاء في أنحاء العالم شكرا لكم جزيلا Shukran on SpaceX I would like to say thank you to, for everybody. Thanks to my parents, my family. Thanks to our leadership, the Mohammed Barash Space Center for their trust. Thank you for everybody who trained us and got us ready for this mission. This is incredible. Launch was incredible, amazing. Thank you so much. And last but not least, thank you, NASA. Thank you, SpaceX, for flying us to space. Go Dragon, go SpaceX. And allow me to introduce our fifth crew member. His name is Suhail, and Suhail is the Arabic name for the star Canobus. And in the Middle East, we anticipate the appearance of Canobus because it marks the end of summer and the beginning of cool time. And Canobus is actually the second brightest star in the night sky. And this is the second flight for uh, Suhail, because he flew with uh, astronaut Hazar Mansouri in 2019. And many people think Suhail is uh, an, al an alien, but to me, on Earth in a space suit, but with high ambitions. Thank you once again, and talk to you from the ISS. And Dragon SpaceX, we copy all those words. Uh, at this time, I can provide you an update that uh, we had nominal dehumidifier activation and service section Draco checkouts. Uh, for your awareness, uh, on hard capture hook five, we did swap to backup motors. So you'll see that the uh, nose cone opening did swap to backup. However, all hooks did indicate that they were traveling and look good on backup. Position signal. All right. Very dynamic time. Um, of course, the Falcon 9 delivering the Crew 6 astronauts into orbit after the nine minute ascent. We heard those great congratulatory words from each and every member of Crew 6, who of course had a strong bond with the teams here in uh, Mission Control and SpaceX. Uh, that call you did here to the crew was about the nose cone. Uh, the nose cone is deploying now. They were troubleshooting an issue with one of the hooks, but switched to backup motors, and we're seeing that nose cone deploy now. Uh, but Crew 6 is now on its way to the International Space Station. It's going to take about 24 and a half hours. So they'll go through a series of checks, a series of initial burns, and then eventually have a sleep period before waking up and really getting into the action uh, with a lot of the burns that bring it closer and closer to the International Space Station. It'll be docking to the Zenith port. We're now getting views from the Dragon, and that's the nose cone deploying that you're seeing right now on the end of the dragon. And Kate, this really sets the uh, crew up for some of the major burns here. That nose cone deploying reveals the four forward bulkhead Dracos that do a lot of the heavy lifting, a lot of those significant burns that bring the crew closer to the International Space Station.
That's right. The nose cone is basically the pointy end at the top of Dragon. So now with that being exposed, those forward bulkhead thrusters uh, will be able to do their job um, as Dragon Endeavor makes its way to the International Space Station. Um, just prior to losing the ground station coverage, we were able to catch a quick glimpse of the zero G indicator. Um, I always love seeing that be revealed uh, as it's always different for each crew and it's always special to the crew members. Um, so I love the words that were shared around that. And I personally have a strong connection to this capsule. This was the Demo 2 capsule, the Crew 2 capsule, the Axiom 1 capsule, and now the Crew 6 capsule. And so um, it always brings a, a lot of uh, pride and joy to see this particular capsule fly in space safely once again. So with all that being said, let's head back over to Daryl and Raja, who saw all of the, the, the liftoff action live. You guys, I bet it was incredible having seen it from the press site myself a couple of times. I know you can feel it. Tell us how it was to see this crew lift off. Absolutely, Kate, and uh, thank you for the toss back here to the Kennedy Space Center. And on that point, we got to get Raj's reaction first because it was his first launch. He's he's been on a <laughs> rocket. He's been to space. Have to see the outside. First time watching a launch. Yeah, that, that was awesome, Daryl. Uh, it was uh, better than I expected. So I think uh, much uh, a much more throaty rumbling sound once it started to pitch over uh, and a beautiful night here so we could see the second stage light we could actually see the throttle down for uh, from stage one to stage B which was really cool uh, saw the separation saw the light go out when the first stage separated saw the second stage light and got to watch it uh, all, pretty much all the way to two Bravo it was it was pretty impressive to so two that, Bravo what, yeah. what, what, sorry those are those are different launch escape phases so yeah it was uh, it was awesome seeing it from the ground and just kind of thinking through what that ride was like a while ago, but uh, I'd, rather, I'd rather be on the inside, than the outside. <laughs> but it's pretty in here with us. <laughs> but it's pretty, it's pretty impressive uh, from both views. Yeah, it was, well, it we're was so cool glad to see them. And exciting, them. yeah, exciting that they're on the way to the space station. Um, so happy for them. No doubt. Congratulations to not only the crew that is getting up into space, but also everyone who helped make it possible. It takes an, an, a tremendous number of people in order to pull that off, and that roar, right? When did you feel it in your chest? Yeah, so on the, the day of, the you can, yeah, here, it, it, you can feel it there and you can feel it here. You'd actually feel the vibration. They can actually bodily, you know, it's actually vibrating your body, Visceral, the, the, the yeah. ground around you. And I think just the coolness of it, almost, it's almost daytime around the launch pad when it first lit, just with the humidity, uh, the temperature dew point spread right now, there's a lot of moisture in the air. So just the reflection of the light, you actually couldn't even see the top of the rocket. It was the, fla the, the plume lit up the whole horizon. So basically as far as you could see, 180 degrees here, just looked like daylight for the first about 20 seconds. So it was really, really cool. Well, your first launch, watching. Yep, I'll be back Sir? again. Yeah, we're ready to see another one. <laughs> we love it. Fantastic. All right, um, as I mentioned before, we got to the you know terminal count and ascent. I said there was a little bit of love in the air, right? Well, why is that? Well, a gentleman by the name of Sabi Farouk brought his girlfriend to the Banana Creek launch viewing location and proposed to her right at liftoff. They're both from Denver. We have a picture, and there it is. There's Sabi and his girlfriend. Now fiance. And now fiance, yep. Tamori. And she's sporting the ring. Congratulations to them. What a, what a special thing to do. He had planned out this because during their, uh, when they first met, they had their first kiss at a rocket launch, and so he wanted to bring <laughs> her back to propose, and it happened right here at the NASA Kennedy Space Center. What a neat love yeah, story, cool, huh? Yeah, what a great story, yeah. Congratulations to both of them. And so now, let's turn it over to Jasmine, who is with a special guest with some post-launch reaction. Jasmine. Thank you so much, Daryl. Here on the balcony of OSB2, we had a great view of launch and the crowd around us just erupted in cheers. It lit up the night sky. Joining us now is Kennedy Space Center Deputy Center Director Kelvin Manning. Thank you so much for being here. Oh, it's great to be here, Jasmine. We are so glad to have you. And Kelvin, first question is easy. What did you think of launch? It was spectacular. And <laughs> any time we're putting people on a rocket makes it even more special. So. We launched satellites, we launched all kinds of things, but tonight it was Steve, Woody, Sultan, and Andre um, watching them walk out, say goodbye to their families, and uh, for us to get them off safely onto the International Space Station, 
that's a huge accomplishment. It really is a huge accomplishment. Daryl just mentioned love in the air and we saw that great proposal at uh, Banana Creek and Commercial Crew is really the perfect marriage of our commercial and our international partners. Isn't that right, Kelvin? Absolutely. So government, industry and, and international partners, it's kind of like a modern day what we strive to have like Star Trek. You have all these people from different planets and uh, we're just getting started here. So maybe one day we'll have uh, people from other planets as well. <laughs> we really are just kicking things off. And you mentioned, you know, that the astronauts flying on today's mission and that you've actually uh, been on the selection panel for a few of the astronaut classes before. One of those was the turtles. So pretty exciting for you to get to see uh, Woody fly today, right? Oh, absolutely. Uh, special guy and um, really looking forward to seeing him on orbit and then getting him back home and, and hearing his stories. Yeah, we're, we're looking forward to having him back as well as uh, the rest of Crew 6. And this was really a great way to kick off the launches of 2023. We mentioned earlier with Janet Petro that we are looking at over 90 launches this year. So what else is going to station in the next few months? OK, we got a cargo resupply mission, CRS-27. We have uh, Boeing's inaugural flight of the uh, crew flight test, uh, looking for Sonny and Butch to sometime this spring to fly the CST-100 Starliner to station. That's a huge deal. And we got uh, another commercial uh, Axiom mission that'll go to the, the space station. And then we'll look at Crew-7 to follow these guys in another six months or so. Wow, a lot of work going on here at the Kennedy Space Center. Uh, Kelvin, any final words of thanks that you want to give to the workforce here? Yeah, it's all about the team, and this is America's space program. You talked about our industry partners, our other government partners, and our international partners. Uh, we have a lot to be proud of, and like we said, we're just getting started. So thank you, Jasmine. Of course, and this really is the dream team. We appreciate you being here tonight, Kelvin. Course, all right, thank you. Daryl, back to you. Thank you so much, Jasmine. And you see her working the love in there with the CCP. <laughs> well done. Thank you very much. Well, the crew is on the way to the International Space Station. We did hear uh, from the SpaceX team that the nose cone hooks at the top of the spacecraft, right? Yep. The Dragon, um, they went to the backup motors in order to release that nose cone. That's pretty critical to make sure you get that up. Great redundancy with the system there. But well, why is that so important that that nose cone comes off? Yeah, so we you can't dock to the space station without the nose cone. So the as we saw, just looking at the views of the capsule before uh, liftoff, it's closed for aerodynamics because you don't want uh, a door wide open while, you, while you're flying through the air. Once you're in space, of course, there's no drag, so then you can open that up. Um, and uh, that exposes the camera and the sensors that allow the Dragon to dock with the International Space Station. There's a whole lot of stuff going on, so the crew was working the comms back down to the ground and monitoring a whole bunch of systems, so we saw the separation. Uh, they have telemetry that gives them information about that, and then uh, the next step is the nose cone deploy, and as you heard the core mention, all of those hooks, uh, there's a dozen hooks, uh, six of them uh, are holding the nose cone, there's, and then basically each of those hooks has backup and primary motors, so what you heard describe is one of those went onto the backup motor to open the hook, which is why we have backup motors. Uh, now with the nose cone open, they should be good to continue to the uh, the space station. Um, and next thing they'll be talking about is, is phasing burns, so we, you know, how they have to catch up. Mm -hmm. uh, I'm sure there'll be teams looking at uh, the data from that to see if it was kind of like we talked about earlier in the broadcast. Was it actually a problem with the primary motor or was it just a bad telemetry? Uh, so the ground has some ability to, to suss that out with some extra data they have. They can try resetting things. So my guess is when they go to actually docking they may retry that primary motor just to see if it's working and then they have the backup oh. motor still as a, an option um, so they still have the redundancy but uh, they'll sort through uh, maybe troubleshooting that some more but I don't think it should affect the, the final one. So those one. hooks are used when they dock? Right the same yeah the same hooks uh, there's Recommend. a soft capture and a hard capture a hard hook system that, that attaches them to the space station but again as long as the backup motor is working it should be fine. Should be good to go. Yep. All right well we will track it all along the way and we know we saw a visual confirmation of the nose cone coming off yep. saw that right on the video with the cameras that SpaceX has. And so now, Stephen, Woody, Sultan, and Andre are on course to arrive at the International Space Station around 1.17 a.m. Eastern Time tomorrow. And of course, NASA TV will be wrapping up our coverage, but you can follow along with Crew-6's entire ride to the station and hear real-time audio from space to ground on our mission audio stream on YouTube. Just look for the link on NASA social media accounts and in the description of the NASA YouTube launch broadcast. 
And though our coverage here at Kennedy Space Center is concluding, Crew-6's mission has only just begun. And you know it well, Raja, when you go up into the International Space Station, you really enjoyed the ride getting there because that's when the work starts. Exactly, yeah. So it's actually a really nice period of time here. You got some time to look out the window, uh, enjoy your time. You spend a lot of time in the sim, the Dragon sim, whether it's out at Hawthorne or the, the ones out in Houston. Um, but it's nice to actually you know, now enjoy the ride uh, and take it all in, especially for the, the three rookies. Get used to some space adaptation, moving around in, in microgravity before you get on the space station. Because as soon as you show up in the space station, man, it is busy. <laughs> it is fun, but it is busy. Time to get to work. Next up is our post-launch news conference scheduled for 2.30 a.m. Eastern Time on NASA TV. We'll have a live joint docking coverage. Uh, of Crew 6. We'll have the welcome ceremony starting at 11 p.m. Eastern Time tonight. Uh, this is, is this will be on Thursday on NASA TV as well as SpaceX's YouTube channel. And you can find mission updates on Twitter, at NASA, at SpaceX, and on the web at nasa.gov, including that link. We'll have it in there in the description of the mission audio stream if you want to stick with Crew 6 during their entire journey to the space station. Well, before we want to sign off here at Kennedy, I want to thank Raja Chari for being on the launch broadcast and sharing your incredible experiences. I learned such an incredible amount. I hope our audience did too. You answered all their questions and it was fascinating <laughs> just to listen to all the things that happened. Really appreciate well, you being here. I'm, I'm glad I got a chance to see a, a rocket launch. And so, yeah, I highly recommend coming here to do this so you can get a great view of a rocket launch. It's the way to go. Great plug for the Kennedy Space Center there, Roger. We appreciate that. And good luck to you on your work with the HLS. You're doing uh, a lot of work there with the human landing system for the Artemis program. And people are really excited about that. Yeah, they should be. It's, it is an amazing time. We've, we're seeing what we're doing in low Earth orbit, and that is just the first step, man. We are going back to the moon to stay and on to Mars, and it is a great time to be in space. Congratulations on watching your first launch, and congratulations to the space lovebirds out there at the <laughs> Kennedy Space Center who tied, or well, at least had, had the proposal and got a big yes. And then, of course, thanks to all of our guests for joining us today. We really appreciate you watching. You, is, you are why we do this, right? So here now are some highlights from the journey to orbit off the Earth for the Earth. For Rajachari and everyone here at the NASA Kennedy Space Center, I'm Daryl Nail. Have a great night and keep looking up. Crew 6 on the move inside astronaut crew quarters. Crew 6 walking outside of astronaut crew quarters for the second time. Andre Fedeyev, Woody Hoberg, Stephen Bowen, and Sultan Al Nayani. The crew departing the Neil Armstrong Operations and Checkout Building, the full security escort across NASA's Kennedy Space Center to launch pad 39A. The commander and pilot, Stephen and Woody, making their way inside Dragon. There go our two mission specialists as they cross the hatch, being very careful. Five-point harness just to save wear and tear on the suits. A lot of times the ground crew will, will help with doing that. As we watch the SpaceX closeout crew close the hatch to the Dragon capsule. Three, two, one. It is full power and lift off. The crew six. Go Dragon, go power.